and gentlemen, please make welcome our host for tonight, Jess McGuire. It's a bit emotionally intense Ooh. when you look at me right in the eye in that last bit. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the second season of something that we call The Song Room, which is we meet here every week. We bring some singer-songwriters in, sit around in the round, play some tunes, shoot the breeze, have a lovely time. It's lovely for you to be here. Um, I don't think there should be any reason why we should wait. We should probably just introduce our very first guest for this evening. What do you reckon? Bring him on. All right, so <clears throat> our first guest is an Australian musician who played bass guitar in Crime and the City Solution and These Immortal Souls, both featuring his older brother, Roland S. Howard. He then played guitar in Pink Stainless Tail for several years and he now fronts his own band, Harry Howard and the NDE, where he sings his own songs and plays guitar. You're going to hear both those things happen. Please welcome Harry Howard. Oh, it's lovely to have you here, Harry. Hi, Harry. Ah. Whoops. I'll pick up my guitar. I might need that, Jess. Oh, absolutely. I just read your bio where you said very <laughs> explicitly that you play it, so I, I wish to see it. Yeah. What, what are you going to kick off with? Some call it playing. <laughs> um, I think where the plan is I'm going to kick off with a song that my brother Roland wrote uh, that's called The Red Clock. Um, he wrote up when he was in the Boys Next Door and it was released on an EP called Hee Haw. This is called The Red Clock. The red clock goes drip tock, drip tock. It's the wine of the times. Stains Antoinette's gown Take a walk in the garden Those hands through the hedges The red clock goes The red clock goes I did my best, Roland. I did my best. <laughs> Excellent. So let's go to our second guest now. Our next guest is uh, one half of Kodachroma. Uh, she studied improvised and contemporary music, but then went on, uh, you know, became a proficient jazz singer and guitarist and eventually came together with Damien Charles to form Kodachroma. Uh, they released their debut single about a year ago called Car Tapes. Their, uh, their first album, Life Through a Lens, will be out at the beginning of next year. Please put your hands together for Kate Lucas. Um, Kay, what are you going to start off with tonight? Um, maybe I'll play an original. That would be lovely. What song are we going to hear? Um, it's a new song and it's called Still Life. Is this going to be on the forthcoming albums? So That's coming out... No. Is, no. No. It's, it's so new. It won't even be on that. Yeah, it'll probably be on the third album. I've written all the songs for the second what? album. What? <laughs> that is so, so organised. Uh, so your first album's not out. Your second album's written... We're about to hear new material that's going on the third. Yes. When it's partly that the first album's taken so freaking long. Well, why, why? What took so long? Uh, I've had two children in between in the meantime. So that can really slow things down. Bloody kids <laughs> have gotten in the way. And yeah. Just, yeah, it's just been hectic. Yeah, you know, that's a, that's a fair excuse. Giving, I created life, so excuse me for the delay yeah. on my albums. Fair. <laughs> I'm not going to argue with that. Yeah. Um, well, not still. Let's hear still life. From the third album, which you can buy in 2020 when it's out. I 
song for like another couple of albums like I, I know that artists get sometimes like I don't know that you have to play so much from one album and by the time that the album comes out you kind of feel a little bit like no 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 I've got more stuff to do I don't know yeah. what it'd be like to have like three albums in the can do you just feel like putting out a triple album yes just getting I, them all out yes yeah. I really do I it'll be like Tupac Sure. Just constantly releasing just albums. The parallels between me and Tupac. Well, we've often called you Melbourne's up. Tupac, so finally it makes sense, yeah, and I exactly. get the nickname. You grew up in uh, in Gippsland, is that right? I did. Yeah, yes. the foot of the Great Dividing Range. Yeah. Where about? What was the town called? Um, it was called Neerham. Neerham. Yes, the main town was Neerham South, and we were in Neerham, which had a cemetery. And that's is that it. what is that what pushed it ahead of Neerham South, which was? Well, no, Neerham South was the big. That was town. Oh. And Neerham was nothing really. Neerham it was just was hills and yeah, it was great. How, how did that influence your, your music taste growing up? Like were you always into music or is that something you yeah. sort of found later on? No, always obsessed with it. Um, my mum, who's here tonight, play, plays piano and she used to play a lot and, um, and my parents both had lots of records and so yeah, we always had music and always sang with each other and harmonised. And, yeah. Oh wow. We might do one of mine which is called Bide My Time um, and it's, I usually play it with the band and it's, we've got like a crazy um, four piece baritone sax section in it and it's very loud and stuff so yeah, it's fun to play it acoustically as is well. Har is Harry going to be doing the baritone sax? We'll see, whatever, of? however he's inspired, you know, we're just going to do my part. Do it off the cuff, <laughs> yeah. Awesome, let's hear it. Try in a shadow of a lie, though it's over. Better to know the pain than never feel anything. But it's best to walk away in the cool light of the day when you discover it wasn't really true. He only liked the idea of. And it doesn't leave you much room to move I bide my time And hold on tightly to my fishing line Oh no, when it's right To start a reeling in all my might 
The cat has got your tongue She's had a nine lives long So unlucky, so unlucky in black Gonna drown her in a sack Here in your arms I remember It's only natural I should want to be there with you It's only natural You should feel the same way too It's easy when you don't try Impressions man in a cage Man, it's confession now You see me at my worst And it won't be the last time I'm down there No, you will never, ever part She turns her sweet head And smiles First to dream And then you die First to dream And then another cover from Roland or an original from not Roland I'm thinking about you're about to play you're thinking of cover, you're thinking of covering shivers and that's why it's on oh, my well, mind right, Harry um, I because I did want to talk to you about Roland because you've, you've played um, one of his songs already and I think you're going to play shivers shortly and I would imagine that it would be quite it's that really fine line I guess between being like an honour to carry that with him because I think you've been playing a lot of bands and a lot of tribute shows for Roland's music since he passed away. Yeah, we did a few. We did a tour and a couple of other shows. And yet you're doing your own stuff as well. So do you feel a great responsibility to, while you're still doing your own things, to sort of carry on that legacy of Roland's music too? Uh, I don't know if it's a responsibility, but I, I still kind of... Well, that sounds odd. I want him to do well, and so if I can help promote him, mm. that's how I see it, is helping to promote him. Uh, you know, I still can't help wanting him to do well, you know, yeah. and posthumously. Uh, so, yeah, that's, uh, it's, it's often quite nice to be able to do it, you know. Uh, it's a bit complicated for me. It would but, be, um, that's why I wanted to ask about it. Yeah. I mean, I, when you were growing up, was he the reason that you got into music? Hmm. I think it was probably our parents because um, they used to have these folk soirees at home. That sounds like Kate's growing up in Nearham. <laughs> you in Nearham as well? No, no, nowhere near him. Near him. <laughs> but um, <laughs> sorry, uh, they did have these folk soirees, and my mum played guitar and she sang. Um, she probably had the Bob Dylan songbook, <laughs> and she sang kind of ir Irish folk songs and stuff. Uh, my dad played a big, large recorder and. Um, it's all quite strange and, you know, we'd just retreat to a bedroom, we'd drag the TV into a bedroom and... Um, Enough of that music. When I grow TV. up, I'm never going to be near music. Look, I don't know. Yeah, obviously, yeah, to get back to your question, just, mm. uh, yeah, he did have a, a large influence on, on me playing music. Mm. Yeah. And, and you've picked Shivers, which, which for, you know, for a lot of people would be there, like a, a huge yeah. touchstone... Of, of his songwriting career. Obviously, he's done a lot more than Shivers, but you've picked that one. Why, why have you gone with Shivers? Uh, well, 
on the practical side, I knew how to play. <laughs> <laughs> you knew the chords. Genius. <laughs> Sorry. But, um... How old was he when he wrote that? I was a bit loath to play it, uh, to do it, actually. He was 16, I think. So were you, were you, like, sharing a room or something yeah, as he's yeah, playing yeah, it? Yeah, he, he, he um, would have written that in our bedroom. I can't specifically remember him writing that one, but I remember finding bits of lyrics around all the time and, you know, looking at them and, you know, looking through his David Bowie songbooks and stuff because he, he had planned his stardom from a very early age. Kind of. You know, as he, a he worked from a very... Early age, at it. Let, let's, that, let the music speak for itself, Harry. Go, but go I do remember, you know, this song um, when I first saw Roland's first kind of proper gigging band, which was called the Young Charlatans, and they played it at the Tiger Lounge um, in Richmond, this pub, and <coughs> and this song did stand out then, just because of this kind of uh, quirky chorus thing I had going about the spy AI and. and um, and so, you know, it's part of my history. I'm allowed to do it. You know, I'm allowed to do it more than... There are no buskers do it, and I'm terrified I'll just sound like a busker no. or something. No. Um, Better you than the Screaming Jets again. I figure I'm allowed to do it, yes. So this is a song called Shivers My Brother Wrote When He Was 16. Just act bored instead And contain the blood I would have shed She makes me feel so ill at ease My heart is really on its knees But I keep a poker so well that even mother couldn't tell that my baby's so vain that she is almost a mirror and the sound of her name sends a, a run shiver down my spine
Thank, thank you, you, Harry. Um, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for being here this evening for The Song Room. Uh, our guests this evening, Harry Howard, Kate Lucas. Please put your hands together for them. Now, we are going to be back next week. Our guests next week at The Song Room are Emily South and Leah Senior. It would be lovely to have you here if you are free. Um, in the meantime, we're going to end with a cover that you guys have selected. Chris, did you pick this one? Who? I picked nothing this week. Who picked it? It was Timmy. I picked it. I was reading a little bit about Harry's past and there was mention made that in the Howard household the monkeys were quite favourable with the young boys. Is that true? <laughs> ah, very true, yeah. Yeah, I mean, was, that's why we picked We love that show. Hey, 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 we're the monkeys. Panicky, man. So we are going to hear the song... The kids have taken over. <laughs> no, you're right. We're going to hear the song Daydream Believer by the Monkeys. Put your hands together. Thank you, Chris and Tim, from The Basics as well. I've been Jess McGuire. We'll see you next week. Feel free to sing along. Oh, I could hide beneath the wave Of the bluebird as she sang The six o'clock alarm never Thanks to Jess, thanks to Harry and Kate, hopefully see you next week. Please tell all your friends and family that we're here and be safe. <laughs>